Okay, let's talk epidemic. Epidemic adjective, spreading rapidly and extensively by infection and affecting many individuals in an area or a population at the same time. Adjective, widely prevalent. Noun, an outbreak of a contagious disease that spreads rapidly and widely. On March 11, 2020, the WHO officially changed its designation of COVID-19, the illness caused by coronavirus, aka Coroni Baloney, from an epidemic to a pandemic. That was March 11th of 2020. This shift prompted a considerable number of people to turn to the dictionary in order to ascertain the difference between the two demics. What is the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic? Epidemic is an outbreak of disease that spreads quickly and affects many individuals at the same time. A pandemic is a type of an epidemic, one with greater range and coverage, an outbreak of a disease that occurs over a wide geographic area and affects an exceptionally high proportion of the population. An exceptionally high proportion of the population. An epidemic plague is a common and popular sickness happening in some region or country at a certain time caused by a certain indisposition of the air or waters of the same region, producing in all sorts of people one and the same kind of sickness. Let me say that again. It would produce in all sorts of people one and the same kind of sickness, aka symptoms. And that is from Thomas Lodge, A Treatise of the Plague in 1603. These diseases have some strong resemblance in their general characters and attack many individuals in a large extent of the country at about the same time are commonly called epidemics. If all or about all of the inhabitants of a country be similarly attacked at or near the same time with a particular complaint or symptom, it is more properly called a pandemic. That's from J.A. Allen, the Boston Medical and Surgical Journal, 5th of September, 1832. Pandemic is less often encountered in a broad and non-medical sense, but it does have additional senses, including affecting the majority of people in a country or a number of countries found in most parts of the world and in varied ecological conditions and of or related to common or sensual love. In this last sense, the word is usually capitalized. Pandemic comes from the Greek pandemos of all the people, which itself is from pan, all or every, and demos, people. Some organizations and scientists have recommended calling the coronavirus a pandemic in the weeks prior to the WHO deciding to do so. It is worth noting, however, there is no clear line distinguishing an epidemic from a pandemic. The latter is, from a public health perspective, worse than the former, but there is sufficient overlap between the two that at certain points consensus is unlikely. The coronavirus has, unfortunately <clears throat> for most, spread now to such a global extent with such severity that we appear to have moved past the point of semantic ambiguity. The disease has taken on pandemic proportions. I don't know how they decided that because it does not work. An epidemic is defined as an outbreak of disease that spreads quickly and affects many individuals at the same time. And then some organizations and scientists re recommended calling the coronavirus a pandemic in the weeks prior to the WHO deciding to do so. However, there is no clear line distinguishing an epidemic from a pandemic. A pandemic is a type of epidemic, an outbreak that occurs over a wide geographic area. Okay, here we are at the CDC site. I'm hoping this is current as of today, which is the 21st of May, 2020. What we need to know about 2019 to 2020. 
Laboratory confirmed flu activity is very low at this time. Elevated influenza-like illness is likely related to COVID-19. CDC recommends stay home as much as possible and avoid close contact with others and learn more about COVID-19. Okay, so let's look at the flu view or the full influenza report. Okay, so laboratory confirmed flu activity as reported by clinical laboratories. This is from the week ending May 9th remains low. Influenza-like illness activity continues to decrease and it's below the national baseline. The percentage of deaths due to pneumonia, influenza, which is P&I, is decreasing but remains elevated, primarily due to corona bologna, not influenza. Reported pediatric flu deaths for the season are high at 174. And you want to know what? Because there's no coronae baloney in the children. Clin Lab said the percentage of respiratory specimens testing positive for the flu is 0.3%, similar to the previous week, which was 0.2%. Public health labs are H1N1 is the most commonly reported virus this year. Uh, the characterizations reporting of genetic or antigenic characterization and antiviral susceptibility of influenza viruses will resume in 2020 to 2021 when we can ignore the corona baloney these people okay so let us look now from the cdc at how many people died from the flu last season the year 2017 to 2018 was the deadliest in 40 years 80,000 people in the u.s died of the flu and complications of the flu 2018 to 2019. For some reason, I think it was like 40,000, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, seasonal. Prevention and control of seasonal influenza with vaccines recommendation of the advisory committee. I'm sorry. Seems to me a lot more people are uh, getting the flu after they've had the vaccine than the other way around. So stay away from that stuff it'll kill you it's a killer here's some key facts about influenza influenza can cause mild to severe illness and sometimes can lead to death flu is very different from a cold flu comes on suddenly people who have flu feel some or all of these symptoms fever feeling feverish cold chills whatever Cough, sore throat, runny, stuffy nose, muscle or body aches, headache, fatigue, blah, blah, vomiting, diarrhea, especially in children. And it's important to note that not everyone with the flu will have a fever. I've never heard of such a thing. I think that's something they've added this year. You know, there used to be a thing, an old adage, feed a cold, starve a fever. In other words, if you have the flu, don't be eating big meals. If you have a cold, eat what you like. But this year, they decided to tell people bullshit that somehow, if you, you can have the flu, you can have the corona baloney and be shedding it, and yet you don't even know you have it. Because the way we shed cells to other people would be by sneezing, by coughing, and by sweating. That's pretty much it. I mean, you might if you're having sex with someone, but I don't think anybody is really out there having sex at this time, especially with people they don't know and they don't pretty much live with anymore. Just stop. Seriously, stop this. Enough's enough. You're destroying our world. Do you comprehend this? I just can't stand it. Please adopt a bit of reason Take that reason, mix it with some other facts that maybe you can look up, and apply some discernment. This world will never get better until you do.